بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على نبيك وعبدك ورسولك خير خلق الله سبحانه وتعالى Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Brothers and sisters, when you hear that name sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I think it's just brothers, right? There's no sisters here right? uh, Is it just a brothers event? Alhamdulillah, apologize, I apologize Whenever you hear that name Always remember to send salutations upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam For you and I are Muslim today Because of the efforts that he put forth for this ummah Because of the fact that he nurtured And he built such a force amongst the companions that they s understood the message of Islam and they understood that its priority was turning back to Allah, calling people to Allah, it's going across the land, going to China, India, going to Morocco, Algeria, going to Europe, going to Asia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, going to all of these countries to spread Islam and for that reason we have it here today. But I want to tell you something, because I'm not going to take long, because I want Akhi Ayman to speak. You know, we all love to hear from Akhi Ayman. May Allah no. bless him. I just want to teach you, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, so I'm just going to say one point about Ramadan. Sweet. And this will change your life if you guys understand this carefully, yeah? All, you, all young men here, if you understand this, you can start a new height of Allah. And you can start a new story of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even better. In Ramadan, what is it that we stay away from? What thing do we stay away from? Uh, food and? Drink. And water, right? Food, water, sins, sins as well. But more importantly, food and drink, right? Food and drink, those things break our fast. Some sins, sins really, they, not all of them do, yeah? Now, your food and water, are they hara haram or are they halal, generally? Yeah. They're halal, right? Matter of fact, not only are they halal, but without them, you would die. Right? If you spend a long period of time not drinking and not eating, you would die. So what is Allah showing you? He's showing you that you can stay away from halal. Understand this very carefully. Allah showing you, you can stay away from halal. Not only can you stay away from halal, but you can stay away from the building blocks of life. The things that without you would die. So Allah is showing you a, a profound lesson here. This is why Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu Kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum La'allakum tattakun Allah says, O oh, you believe fasting has been prescribed upon you made an obligation upon you as it was made an obligation upon those before you so that you may attain God consciousness, taqwa. Fasting is not to feel what the poor feel when they're hungry. It's a byproduct. Maybe it's a side effect. Fasting is not to feel the fangs of hunger. No, but this is, Allah says it's for what? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may be mindful of God. So you may know your worth in the sight of Allah. So you may constantly understand that you, your worth, you don't need to sin. Now I'm going to explain this thing again. Now I'm going to end on this. So your food and drink is halal. Allah showing you, you can leave your food and drink for the whole month. For the whole month. So Allah showing you that you can leave off the halal so don't let shaitan fool you and say you need to fall into haram. Don't, understand? Don't let shaitan come to you and say you need to steal, you need to backbite, you need to commit zina, you need to speak to girls, you need to smoke, you need to uh, do indecent things. No, that's shaitan. That's west west. You don't listen to that. Why? Because Allah is showing you, oh my servant, I've showed you your true worth. I've showed you that you can stay away from halal and you're doing it perfectly fine. Not only are you staying away from halal, you're staying away from the things that without you would die. So don't ever let shaitan come to you and think that you need to fall into haram. Mm. Yes, you will make mistakes. And if you make mistakes, you say astaghfirullah. You say astaghfirullah. But that's your true worth. So let it be known that after Ramadan, it's about Ramadan resolutions. It's about new heights with Allah. You don't need to go into the things that you were once indulging in that were haram. You don't need to fall into those things which, are, which displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to have a harsh and hard relationship 
with your parents. Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man lam yada' qawl al-zur wal amala bih Whoever doesn't leave evil speech, evil speech and evil sins and bad actions, فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً Then Allah does not need him a yada' ta'amahu wa sharaba To leave his food and his drink. Do you understand? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, if you're not leaving evil speech and bad actions, Allah doesn't need you to leave your food and your drink. Why? Because your food and your drink are halal and you're leaving the halal. It don't make sense. You're leaving halal but you're falling into haram. You have, you've misunderstood the dimension of fasting, the school of fasting. Fasting is to show you that, look, Allah is saying you're falling into haram but you're leaving the halal. Wait, stop. That's not what fasting is. Fasting is showing you that you are staying away from halal, staying away from those things that without you would die. So don't ever fool yourself and think you need to commit those sins. And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It might be that a person will fast and he gets no reward from Allah except hunger and thirst. Why? Why? Because? Why? Someone tell me why. Think about it. Someone tell me why. Why is someone going to fast the whole day he gets hungry, Maghrib comes, he's just about to eat, but he, the, he gets no reward from Allah. The only reward he gets from Allah is what? The only thing that he feels, sorry, is what? First and hunger. Why doesn't he get reward? Because he never controlled you. Oh, sorry. No. I don't pray, that's good, that's one. But spit on what I've mentioned. Exactly. He doesn't refrain from sins whilst fasting. He indulges in the haram while fasting. He does what the Nabi وسلم, said you shouldn't do. You shouldn't speak bad and you shouldn't fall into bad actions. On that note, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make a Ramadan a blessed one. That he makes us from those who uh, benefit in this month and uh, reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best possible manner and that are forgiven. Amen. The Nabi says Allah frees people from the hellfire on every night of Ramadan. Why does Allah free people on, from the hellfire on every night in Ramadan? Why? Why? Does anyone know why? Because the hellfire doors are locked. They're locked. Good, good, good. But now, so they're locked. People are already destined to be in the hellfire. Allah's got. May Allah protect us. He's got like millions of names in the hellfire. Yeah. Now, certain people, Allah takes them out of this hellfire list and He puts them into the Jannah list. Why? Because they're refraining from sin. Because they're refraining from sin. Yes. But more importantly, refraining from sin, that's the best thing. But they show Allah something in Ramadan that Allah has never seen from them before. SubhanAllah. They show Allah a different side to them that Allah has never seen before. Mm. So much so, you know what Allah does? He calls you by your name. He says, Ya Malalika, He says, Oh angels, look at my servant Abdullah. Look at my servant Muhammad. Look at my servant Yusuf. Look at my servant Abdurrahman. Look at my servant Arashi. Look at my servant Ayman. Look at what they've done that they've never done before, all for my sake and to please me, bear witness that I have taken this person out of hellfire for eternity, for eternity. When Allah takes a name out of hellfire, Allah's not like us for mutaraddideen, oh, we change our mind, no. Allah Azza wa Jal, through His mercy, His rahmah, His infinite wisdom, His al-alim, once He takes you out of hellfire, khalas, you're successful forever. So you have to show Allah in this month a side that you've never seen before, that he's never seen before. Maybe it's praying those extra rak'ahs. Maybe it's reading those extra pages of Quran. Maybe it's attending the mosque and praying more in Jama'ah. Maybe it's being good to your parents in such a different manner. Maybe it's coming home and when you go home, you kiss your parents' hand and you kiss their heads. London doesn't run, but yeah, that's something that Allah wants to see from you. And when you do that, Allah boasts to the angels about you and they are happy, they are happy. Allah is so happy with you that he frees you from the hellfire.
Do you not want that? Yeah. specifically in Ramadan. And Allah is saying in this verse, respond to the call of Allah. Nabi Sallallahu said, إِذَا جَاءَ Ramadan, When Ramadan comes, يُنَادِي مُنَادِي A call of who? The call of Allah. يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ Oh, the one wanting good. أَقْبِلْ أَقْبِلْ Now is your time to shine. Now is your time to show Allah a different side of you that he's never seen before. I know the one wanting to do evil on that madness. Stop. It's Ramadan. Don't come there with, with that vibe, with that energy, that bad energy. It doesn't run. Stop. And Allah says, and whoever doesn't respond to the caller of Allah, the caller of Allah that comes in Ramadan, the caller of Allah, he would not be able to, to, to escape in this earth or, 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 or try and flee from Allah in this earth, nor in the heavens. They are in a blatant misguidance. On that note, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses you, he blesses your family, frees you all from the hellfire, frees your parents from the hellfire, Amen. frees your offspring from the hellfire, grants you righteous wives and righteous offspring, that the corners of your eyes, you will start families one day, you will alhamdulillah find the best jobs that can help Islam and the Muslimin. Don't just think about the lavish lifestyle, always have that intention inshallah to try and help Islam and the Muslimin. Jazakum Allahu khayran, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على محمد. My dear respected brothers, جزاك الله خير for coming here. I'm not gonna lie to you, we didn't promote this reasons being, as you know, space wise is a bit. We didn't want it to get overcrowded, not because of myself, but الحمد لله whoever Allah سبحانه وتعالى would have chosen to come here. Also like to thank Yasin Youth and everything that they do for the communities. I've been friends with uh, Sheikh Omar Hajjaj for some time right now. I would say what, about four or five years now, I would say. And um, Allahumma Barik, he's a man of, that cares. He's a man, he's a man that cares for his community. MashaAllah. Do I really need this? He's a man that cares for his community and he's a man that cares for you. What do you want to achieve in your lives? These are the questions that we were talking about yesterday when I was on a live podcast with a few influencers. The question is, one of the questions is, why me? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pick you to be a Muslim? What does he want to see you do? What's your purpose? Why are you here? Like, oh, where am I going? You know, these sort of questions you have to ask yourself. What you do right now, Especially for the past 11 months you've been sinning and sinning and disobeying Allah Regardless if it's speaking to girls or watching haram on social media Because we all do it, we all fall into it That's what we lie to ourselves We scroll through Instagram or we scroll through TikTok And something comes on and we spend a law that, that one second is a bit too long Longer than usual We do this for about 11 months But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our Stad Yusuf mentioned, this Allah was to see you. And if your name was one of the names of people of Jahannam, then inshallah wa ta'ala, Allah wants to see you shine. He wants to see you redeem yourself. This is why he gave you Ramadan. This month, when the Quran was revealed, out of the, out of the whole other months, when the, you got to understand this here, 
Whatever the Quran touches, it blesses. The Quran was revealed unto Jibril, he became the best of angels. The Quran was revealed unto none other than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu It wasn't Musa, it wasn't Isa, it wasn't Yusuf, it wasn't, it wasn't even Adam alayhi salam himself. It was revealed upon the Prophet sallallahu and he became the best of creation. And it was revealed on the month, and that month became the best of months. And it was revealed on the night, and that night became the best of nights, Layla from Adi. So I ask you, oh dear respected brothers, for those of you that are here, for those of you that are 12, 13, 20, 30, whatever years old you are, imagine if the Quran touched you in your heart. Imagine if you implemented it in your life. Imagine if you went as far as having this appointment that you set with yourself. You know what? I have an appointment. On a daily basis, I would read one page of Quran. And that's your connection with the Book of Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made every single fin, meaning the angel, and every single one, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and every other thing, such as Ramadan, which is a month, and this night, Laylatul Qadr, to be the best of things and the best and the best of creation. Imagine what happens with your connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You see, Sheikh, and this is something I would like to have a discussion. So it's like a it's like a live podcast with myself and the Stad Yusuf. Yesterday we was on our way to the Masjid in Luyan. Yeah. And we get a phone call. What was that phone call, your Sheikh? From someone from this community. SubhanAllah. Yeah. From someone call. from this community. We got a phone call from a brother, I believe. Yes. Uh, who was very emotional. Who gave us news of someone who passed away uh, that lived in this community. Uh, from this, perhaps this area. Or at least within the, the precincts of this area. No. Someone who many of us maybe have been acquaint, uh, acquainted with. Mm. A young brother by the name of Omar, sir. No, Sheikh, I met him the first time was actually in Yasin Youth. That was last year. First time I met him was actually last year. Uh, and we asked them to put their hand up, see how many of them knew him. How many of you know Brother Omar that passed away in a car accident on Juma? So some of you know yeah, him. One, two, some three, of you know him. From the community. Yeah. You, if yeah. you don't know him, then you've seen him around. You've yeah. seen the pictures going around. So, you know, so Sheikh, please explain. Explain what it means for you to, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took your soul back to him in the month of Ramadan. What does, what does, what does Islam say about this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin removed from the hellfire and caused to enter Jannah, they are the successful. No. Our brother was fasting. Mm -hmm. We are witness over that. Our brother Umar rahimahullah Ameen. rahmatan wasi'a. Not only was he fasting, he had just prayed Jumu'ah. Yes. Not only that, it was in the blessed month of Ramadan. Not only that, he was going to do some shopping for his family. Not only that, but there are some narrations to say that those who die on the Friday, that they would not be punished, they would not be experienced the, the adab al qabr. Subhanallah. Yeah. They would punish with the grave. Yeah. Then subhanallah, Shaykh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is what I love the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses. He doesn't say that uh, anything else when it comes to death apart from every soul shall taste. You see, you need to understand why he used the word taste. You see, you know, sometimes when we eat something, the taste might be amazing, delicious, or something might be what bitter. The word taste. When the angel of death comes for you, O oh Muslims, O oh Mushriks, O oh Kuffar, whoever it may be, O oh animals, even the animals will, change, will taste this death. And depending, just depending on your relationship with Allah, if that taste is bitter, then understand whatever was to come after your death is going to be nothing but misery. But if that taste of death is sweet, 
then understand that your soul is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only through his mercy will you enter Jannah. And this is why Shaykh subhanAllah, I tried to look over the word taste. Why would Allah use? He didn't say hey, all of you will witness death. No, he said taste death. But that depends on your actions and your relationship and your etiquettes and your character and your behavior that you portray to people, especially those that you live with. Those that are under the same roof as you. You see, our Prophet Umar was on his way from coming from Salat to Jum'ah, on his way to go and do something that is pleasing to Allah, go and do something that is pleasing to his parents, shopping, and he was with his brother. So we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think, I think we got told that his brother was also going to be in a surgery today. So we got the phone from yesterday saying tomorrow he's going to go into surgery. So we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his surgery go well if he hasn't had his surgery yet. Allahumma ameen. But my dear respected brother and sister, be obviously that's for the sisters that are online or whatever it may be, yeah? But for the brothers, actually ask yourself this, and I want you to answer this. Because we're still in the first week of Ramadan. I want you to put your hand up and actually answer this with your heart, not with your speech, not with your mind that you have to think about it. Whatever that you have within your heart, where is the one thing that you still want to improve on during Ramadan? Where is the one thing that you want to improve on? <coughs> your deen. Now that's why I'm trying to make it easy for you. I mean, what's the one thing that you want to improve on? That you fall short before Ramadan. Don't expose your sin. But what is the one thing that you want to improve on? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated and he made it clear. The difference between us and the non-believers is Salah. And I'm not here to call you a kafir. Never. But I'm telling you, if you neglected Salah and you're not consistent, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance in Surah Fatiha, at least how many times a day, Shaykh? At least 17, 17 times a day. And that's for those that pray five times a day, Sah Shaykh. And what happens, Shaykh, in the next surah, in Surah Baqarah? What does Allah gives you the answer? What does He say, Ya Shaykh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that this is a clear that this is a book with no doubt. It's clear cut. And for those what was the second ayah? And for those oh, the I, guidance. Yeah. And for those that want to seek guidance, my dear respected brothers, this is the book for you. And if you're stressed at home, this is the book for you. If you're stressed in school, this is the book for you. If you've got marriage issues, there's no such thing as a perfect marriage. Shaitan will get involved in your marriage and try to separate you day in, day out. And if you are so toxic, before Ramadan, best believe that when Ramadan comes, you will have been addicted to this toxicness. That even during Ramadan, you are still backbiting each other. You are still harsh towards each other. You are still cursing each other. And you are still calling each other names. Because you are so used to it. But this is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to you. And so this is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran. How many of you have left the Qur'an in your show and it's collecting dust? How many of you that when you scroll through Instagram and, and scroll through social, um, uh, TikTok and whatever it may be, what happens? You see one or two videos of reminders and you continue to scroll. Your heart doesn't want to hear it. In the remembrance of Allah, do the hearts find ease. You hear someone reciting the book of Allah, the Quran, and you scroll by. But if my dema, if there's a Jew, or if there is a, 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 a vine, or whatever it may be, or stupid videos, you tend to spend more time on that video. Or for those of you that are, you know, into your cars, yeah, you hear, me, bro, you hear that car revving. <laughs> but you spend more time on that than you do on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then understand that there is an illness within the heart. And yesterday, Sheikh, as you know, yesterday we went to an area. We don't want to disclose the name. We went to an area, Sheikh, and the brothers, subhanAllah, they don't understand the seriousness 
of when you say Allahu Akbar. During Salah, someone's phone rang. And they never mentioned, please put your phone on silent. But someone forgot to put his phone on silent. And it resulted to a ringtone going off. And kids couldn't have even been adults are laughing while the Imam is reciting Surah Fatiha. So, Sheikh, for the one that doesn't pray, yeah, Sheikh, you understand? For the one that doesn't pray, what is, what is his reward in Yawm Qiyamah? What is, how is his account in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, <coughs> قالوا ما سلككم في سقر قالوا لم نكن من المصلين ما سلككم في سقر قالوا لم نكن من المصلين Now when the people of Hellfire ask why are you in hell the first thing that they would say is that we never used to pray that we never ever used to pray. Not only that, Allah says that the first thing you'll be asked about on the day of judgment is your prayer. And if your prayer is upright, everything else will be upright. You won't need to worry. But oh, subhanAllah, Shaykh, there's something that came to mind of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And now we're talking about death. He said, every soul shall taste death. But at the graveyard of every single janazah, Uthman radiallahu anhu used to weep. He used to be in so much that like, he would lose control. And then they were asking him, Ya Uthman, ya, and correct me on this respect, Ya Uthman, why do you weep like this? But when the Prophet of Allah said, mentions about anything other than this, you don't weep. Jannah, Jahannam, you don't weep. Yeah, you don't weep. Why? He said, This is the beginning. This is the beginning. And if your question, those three questions that are come to you in the grave, if you were upright and you followed them with your actions and your behavior and your character and you implemented it in your life, you know those three questions in the grave? If you don't get punished in the grave, then understand, wa and understand whatever was to come after is nothing but beauty. But if you were to be punished in the grave, understand to the whatever comes after that is nothing but the worst of punishments. And this is Uthman radiallahu anhu. But what did Uthman radiallahu anhu say or do with his actions or with his words that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says from this moment onwards? From this moment onwards. What? You know what? I will let us start mentioning this because wallahi, I like, I like hearing it instead of saying it. So your Sheikh, when Uthman radiallahu anhu, when he was asked and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was asking for donations, there was one thing that Uthman radiallahu anhu done. What was it, Sheikh? Uthman radiallahu anhu, he done something profound on that day. He mm. gave a hundred camels and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked for the whole community to give more. Uthman gave more and more and more and more and more. So much so that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, ما ضر عثمان ما فعل بعد هذا اليوم. Nothing will harm Uthman after this day. No matter what he does, nothing will harm him. He's safe with Allah. الله أكبر. And this is someone that even the angels were shy of. Uthman رضي الله عنه. And this is someone that got married to. Can someone tell me? Got married? الله عليه وسلم. Not one, but two. And it was called, and correct me on this year, instead, that if the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu were to have a third one, he would still give it to Uthman If he had 99. Even if he had 99. He would give them all to Uthman Radiallahu Anhu. Allahu Akbar. Now ask yourself this. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was within this gathering, how would he look at you? How would he look at you? Would he be proud of you? Would he... Be happy with you and the sins that we've committed for the past 11 months. Would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa if sins were a smell, would he come near you? Would you smell good or would you smell bad? So my dear respected brothers, wallahi cherish these moments. 
Cherish these days. Cherish the people that you have around you. And Umar, and how old was Umar? He was in the early 20s. 22. 22 years old. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. On that point, Akhi I want to say something profound for Please. all of you kids here. Yeah? You guys are young growing up. Remember, Akhi has been there, done that. We've grown up as well here. And my piece of advice I'll give to everyone that's young here, because you guys are very young. Don't feel peer pressure into falling into sins. No. Yeah? Don't feel peer pressure in someone telling you that you need to smoke. Don't ever touch cigarettes in your life. Mm. Don't feel peer pressure in or you. vapes as well. Yeah, yeah. Or vapes. Yeah, vapes. Or don't feel peer pressure in you having to watch indecent things. Mm. I tell you right now, mm. no one should watch yani, stuff Allah to like, No one should feel peer pressure or be exposed to illicit images of naked women mm. or things like that or videos or anything like that. It's very important. I'm telling you guys right now, you guys are young man. We have to tell you the truth. We have to protect you. Do you understand? We have to protect you because we, do you understand? We're your older brothers. So don't ever, ever allow smoking, drinking, evil actions, like peer pressure from people, uh, illicit images, mm. or mm. even carrying a knife, carrying a carrying knife, drugs. Yeah, Shift. carrying so, drugs. So, Tell so me. Shift, this is so knowing that you're from this community, from Northwest London and so on and so forth. Nowadays, the youngsters are being peer pressured into carrying drugs or, mm. or, or, or actually selling drugs. Mm. So, so we, as your older brothers, and let me make it clear, this is not about snitching. If someone's doing that and he's a Muslim. It is your right, as the youngsters, to come forward to your community and tell your community that the so-and-so person is forcing me into doing drug dealing. Correct? Salam ala shaykh. And tell, I, bro, t tell anyone, tell any brother that's from the community that you know man. that would teach that brother a, a big lesson. Do you understand? A big lesson. Don't feel peer pressure in doing that because man. at the end of the day, Amen can say it, I could say I had probably about 10 childhood friends that are no longer in this world. Do you understand? And I remember they died young. They died young. Some died teenagers, some died early 20s, some were murdered, some were shot at. Point some is, overdosed. Yeah, overdosed. Seriously. Some are in mental hospital, some have lost their mind. And what I'm saying is there's no better life for you to live than to be honorable to your parents. Mm. When they're telling you to study, because you need to seek a job, or you need to learn a trade, then do it. But Ustad Yusuf, everybody is trying to seek Izza other than Allah. What does Allah say? What does Allah say for those of you that are trying to seek honor other than the religion of Allah? Allah says, Ayabtaguna indahumul Izza. Ayabtaguna indahumul Izza. Allah says, Do they seek Izza from these things? From the garments that they wear, and the cars that they drive, or the way that they speak, or or, or, the, or the things that they watch, or the status that they have, or, 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 or the vaping. Do they seek status from that? Do they seek honor from that? What does Allah say? All honor belongs to Allah. The Izzah, the honor. Allah belongs, all of it is with Allah, His Messenger and those who believe. Yeah. Don't try and seek honor from anything else other than Islam, Muslims and your religion. Mm -hmm. Brothers and brothers, Wallahi, you ain't going to find it elsewhere. The most honorable thing that you're going to carry on your chest is Islam. Yeah. Be proud of it. Allah. Walk around with that qamis. Yeah. Walk around with that kufi. Yeah, alhamdulillah, have that miswak. Alhamdulillah, say you're Muslim. Salah time in school is salah. Allah is more important than you. Pray. Wallah al -Azim. Like you said, Allah, and if you live by anything other than the religion of Allah, Allah will disgrace you, not just in this Allah. dunya, but in the akhirah. You see, there was a time that there, there, there will come a people that will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They used to be able to see. They used to know what their mom looks like, their dad looks like. They used to know the, the cars they used to remember in this dunya and so on and so forth. And they will stand in front of Allah. Ya Allah, I used to see in this dunya. Why have you resurrected me blind today? And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it and makes it clear to you. My ayah came to you, my Quran came to you. The adhan was 
was being heard, but you neglected it. The signs were there for you. You neglected my eye and my signs. So today, I resurrected you blind, and I'm neglecting you. Do you want that to be you? Do you want that to be you? I don't want that. One more I fear for myself. If I were to die right now, I don't know where I'm promised. I don't know where I'm promised. I don't know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even accepted one salah for me. One salah. But prophets nowadays walk around the streets or walk around the dunya like they've got the green card of Jannah itself. And they look down upon you and they call this guy as a kafir. This guy is a kafir. This guy is a son of a kafir. This guy is a kafir squid. Where is this, bro? What's the world come to, act? Eh? The world, I can best believe. We establish us Allah. And actually, let me make it clear. Sheikh, someone came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he wanted, he wanted, he wanted Jannah. He wanted to believe in the Lord of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he came and asked him. He said, "What does it mean for me to believe?" What was the first one he mentioned, Sheikh? Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said that you say the shahada, and that you establish the prayer, and that you fast Ramadan, and that you give your zakah, and you perform Hajj if you can. So hold on. I believe in La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. What's the second thing, Sheikh? Just establish the prayer. Okay, I will only pray five, five salahs. Yeah, nothing more, mm. nothing, less. nothing less. No sunnahs, no nothing. I will only pray my five daily Sorry. prayers. What's next, Sheikh? I give my zakat, two point five percent of my wealth. Two point five percent, whatever of my savings, even if I have a million pounds, I will only give two point five percent of my of that million pounds. And guess what? I'm not going to give no more else. I'm not going to give, and I'm not going to give. Why? Because Allah told me I'm only required to give 2.5%. What's the last thing? Cool. Uh, Ramadan. Psalm Ramadan. You know what, Sheikh? Everybody likes to fast Mondays and Thursdays and so on and so forth on the free white days. You know what? I don't want to fast this. I will only fast the month of Ramadan. That was what is required. And what's the last thing, yeah, Sheikh? Hajj if I can. Hajj if I'm required. If I don't have the music, if I don't have the money, and if I can't go out there for me to pay for Hajj, then I will only do it if I'm suitable. And you're only allowed to do it once in your lifetime. Once. You only can do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can minimum. only do it. Minimum once. So, Sheikh, what will happen to me if I only stick to these five things? The Nabi Sallallahu said, Aflaha in Sadaq. He said, if he, if, he, if he does what he said, he will be successful. He'll enter Jannah. He'll enter Jannah. Look how simple the religion is for you. Look how simple the religion is for you. But let me tell you something that inshallah wa ta'ala, I know we're nearly done. I know some brothers are, you know, breath is kicking and we're hungry. And I understand but my breath kicks as well, yeah? Hmm? Say no more. We'll make dua for Omar. Oh yeah, my dear respected. Two minutes. I'll make, we'll make dua for Omar and we'll ask Allah to bless this gathering. Allahumma inna nas'aluka bi asma'ika al-husna Allahumma inna nas'aluka bi annaka al-kareem bi annaka al-ghafur al-rahim Allahumma arham akhina Umar Allahumma arhamhu rahmatan wasi'ah Allahumma nawwir qabrahu Allahumma ja'alha nooran ya rabbal alameen Allahumma aghfillahu wa lana ya rabbal alameen Allahumma tub alayna innana kunna khati'een warhamna ya rabbal alameen faman lana illa rahmatan الواسعة يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحمنا ووالدينا اللهم اجعلهم من أهل الجنة الفردوس الأعلى اللهم بارك لأخينا عمر في قبره اللهم اعف عن سيئاته وتقصيره في جنبك يا رب العالمين وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Everyone will just make dua for themselves before the adhan is given. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the fasting, the dua of the fasting person is never rejected. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. I just want to mention one more thing, Sheikh, yeah, if that's okay, please. Yeah? yeah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, take advantage of what you have. You see, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever prays Isha, in congregation with the Imam, he's like he's prayed half of the night. And, huh? and he and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went further and said, Whoever prays the whole of Salatu Taraweeh, not the gan, you know them, you know them four rak again. You know the guys that pray four rak again, yeah, bro. Man's free now. My dad's still praying. Let me go and chill with the man them. 
until witr is done. No, 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 no. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Says that dates here, but just to go on, he said the one that prays Salatul Isha with the Imam, it's like he's prayed the whole night. And he goes further to say that whoever prays Salatul Taraweeh with the Imam until the end, until Salatul Witr, it's like that he's prayed the whole night. My dear respected brothers, just understand this straight after Taraweeh. Imagine if you were to go to sleep, imagine you're sleeping in your bed, gone. Knocked out, you're waiting for sa'ur because your mom is waiting to wake you up and so on and so forth. But you'll get the reward like you stood there the whole night and prayed to Allah. Wouldn't you want this? So if any time one of the men wants to drag you outside the, outside the mash, you go, bro, let's go and get a milkshake. Or let's go, no, bro, listen. I want to finish with the imam. I want to finish the whole tarawih and I want to pray my wittu because even though I may not go to sleep straight away, but I want to get the reward like I've prayed the whole night. Fajr? And? How about Fajr? And Fajr. And guess what? If you pray Fajr in Jama'ah, it's also the same reward as praying the whole night. So for those of you who use this opportunity, that even though you may live far from the masjid, wake your dad up. Say, Dad, we need to go to the masjid and pray. Jama'ah. Because if you pray Salatul Fajr in Jama'ah, it's like that you've prayed the whole night. Oh yeah, Jazakallah khairan. When are we going to pray? We're going to pray salah. We're going to eat some food, inshallah. Mm. I, whoever doesn't want to, uh, so whoever wants to make wudu, please. There is some. Uh, there's toilets in the back, uh, sinks, and uh, where you can go and do your wudu, and there's bathrooms as well. Jazakallah khairan. Salah will be in about four minutes, 20 past.